So then we are back with more understandings from the Renewed Covenant. It's the uh, Aramaic English translation of the Holy Oracles. And the Holy Oracles were given then to Yahweh's own people. And he brought them out of the land of Egypt. They were slaves. And they were given a great step forward in the direction of the world. And uh, they should remind themselves where they came from. So they can uh, understand the great favors bestowed upon them from the viewpoint ever since they were brought out of Egypt. And there are areas of this present world and the world truly is craving for direction, true direction because the situation is very uh, daring but there are some people that they take advantage of the bad system and they make fun of it from behind however there are many other people wanting true definitions and solutions However, there is a portion of it in acts of Ruach HaKodesh in the lives of the Shilishim. In Acts 5, then, Gamaliel, he was a very interesting person because he was the chief rabbi of his time, very famous for being a very balanced and very... Uh, understandable person regarding the Torah and the teaching of the Holy Oracles and he began having a sense of what was coming in the near future because when the Mishia came the Mishia was then disregarded not until much later when Ruach HaKodesh came and then the Shilishim they started functioning in miracles and signs and wonders then Gamaliel was very then sensitive towards the main work of Ruach HaKodesh in the lives of the Shilishim and making a comparison of what's coming in the near future regarding the revelation because it is related with the services of the tabernacles as a continuation line from the time of Moshe it is very dangerous not thinking with the line or the lineage ever since Moses because most of the teachings outside of these holy scoundrels a person might say they don't know how to teach in fact, they should never be teaching in the first place. That's why our nation is ruined. The fact is, there is a way of thinking Gentile-wise, pointing where to find answers, and the answers are found in the camps. Gamaliel, however, he began with the basic understanding of the Torah. He was a teacher of the Torah. His way of living was always based upon the Torah and there was never a thought in his mind not lined up with the Torah. Nation-wise and then direction-wise, teaching-wise and the minimum requirement of working under Gamaliel was knowing the Torah by memory. Not very many students of his time could quote any portion of the Torah or then Genesis until Deuteronomy by memory. It was the minimum requirement. So he was a very understandable person and very experienced in the Torah. However, when then the people began to function in Ruach HaKodesh, he did recognize that these people, they were not exercised in the Torah as his students were. But he felt the presence of Elohim in the lives of the Shilishim. 
That's why when you read the portion regarding then in Acts, the chapter number 5, you can understand where Gamaliel was coming from. He did understand the lineage or the line of the divine ever since the time of Moses. So then he states in the 35th, and he said to them, Males and sons of Israel, take caution to yourselves and determine what is proper course of action to you about these males or about these shilishim. And then he goes on and explains why. From before this age, Tauda rose up and he said concerning himself that he was a great person and about 400 people went after him. This was a person then prior that decided to come up with some ideologies and he was able to get a lot of people for himself because he was thinking on some sort of a revolution of the past and he couldn't make it. So then let's have this person in mind, Tauda. So then we understand the concept from the lineage of the Torah. The Torah is absolutely solid, never changes. If you sin, if you do not sin, if you observe people in sin, or if they don't sin, the Torah never changes. And repentance is always available. So then Tauda is the person then prior of the incidents of then Ruach HaKodesh in the lives of the Shilishim and he organized the movement to get going. In other words, there were not very many events going on at the time and he thought of himself, Tauda, that he would then bring up a new fresh understanding and movement so the nation could go forward. However, Gamaliel, he was then aware of this fact. And he was then comparing of what's going on versus what was taking place in the past. So then he states, in about 400 then after him, and he was destroyed. And those who went after him were then sent in many areas and came to nothing. In other words, the movement simply waned. And after him arose then the Galilean Yehuda in the days that the men were registered for the tax and caused to turn many people after him. And also he died and those went after him were then spread away. Now myself say to you and to yourselves that these men he is speaking of then Shimon and then the first people that were then endowed with Ruach HaKodesh and be cautious what you do with these men and leave them alone. For if this is then their own works, then obviously he would be halted. Because what he's saying is this, regarding Tauda or then regarding the Galilean Yehuda, when they try to do on their own, it's going to come to destruction. However, when he felt from the Shilishim, he said, then he pointed out, if this is from the Elohim, you can't stand against Elohim. So what is going on, for instance, in our nation, regarding then first the lineage of understanding of the Torah? This is how we should be thinking. It's not the Savior, it's not the Messiah, it's not the temple or the tabernacles at this very moment. The most important, what is the line of understanding from the Torah? Because the Torah then includes the Messiah. If you try to understand the Messiah without the Torah, then you go nowhere. Because the Messiah, when he came, he came in line with the Torah already previously given. So then what Gamaliel is pointing is he has to be in line with the Torah. That's what Gamaliel then is comparing Tauda and then Yehuda and then he's speaking of the Shilishim. 
he knew for sure whatsoever comes from Elohim must be in line with the Holy Torah. That's why he's saying, be cautious what you do, because if this is from Elohim, then you can't stand against him. So what's going on in our nation today in terms of the understanding from the divine? Most of the people, they don't think of the Torah. So then, they are already destroyed. They can't think any further. Because whatsoever they come up beyond what the Torah taught, and the line of understanding from the Torah, then they are these Tauda and then Yehuda, those that are trying to do on their own, and they always fail. In our country, if we don't have the understanding from the Torah, then we are destroyed. That's why our country is ruined. They tried to do on their own and they failed. So then, people are placing again hopes in a new government. A government from a candidate does not understand the Torah. It's not going to work. It's going to be another Tauda or another Yehuda trying to do in his own. The reason is because the very person candidate does not understand the lineage of the Torah. It's going to fail. The only portion of it that we might have a chance, it's only if we believe in the Torah, in the lineage of the Torah, and then understand the forward motion ever since the time of Moses. Now, in the situation as it is, this new candidate, he doesn't understand the Torah. He is from a determined type of congregation that thinks that the Torah was abolished, do you think the system is going to work? Read from the original manuscript. Read what the uh, Gamaliel, the great rabbi of the time, spoke. Before the situation was presented before him, he already warned them. Be cautious because remind yourselves of Tauda, remind yourselves then of then Yehuda. Those people they try to be a person or people they would try to start up a movement to get the situation refreshed and because they were not lined up with the Torah then they were destroyed. Our country is no far away from it. Every leader coming around, they are another Tauda or another Yehud. Every time. And it's truly stupidity for most of the people having this scandalized, twisted word of Elohim, expecting another result. Without the proper lineage of the Torah, it is wasting of time. This is what Gamaliel then is expounding. The only reason why the Shilishim then, they were engaged in the work of Elohim, it's because Elohim had chosen them. And there it is. People are again excited because of the new government. It's not going to work. Not trying to be a downer. But what is fact is fact. People can put their trust in governments or people not lined up with the Torah. Simply can't. It's going to be another Tauda or then another Yehuda. Another four years is going to come, it's going to end, and the nation is not going to recuperate. 
because the nation is lacking the understanding of the lineage of the Torah. This is precisely what Gamaliel is pointing out. So then what he is then stating? Our focus must be in renewing our understandings from the viewpoint of the Torah but from the grace imputed in the Torah for the second service of the tabernacles. Then we are lining up ourselves properly with the Torah. If we don't do this, our country is not going to recuperate. Because based upon what the history has shown us, many leaders came with the same copy of the same scripture and the result were disastrous. And this next government it's going to be disastrous. And then what else can these uh, scoundrelized congregations or denominations can further teach? What are they going to teach? The truth is already presented. We are living in a times and seasons where the camps of the Holy Hebrews are returning. What are these establishments they are going to teach? Junky compilations of verses from pieces of understanding that they don't even understand themselves. And they think there is some sort of a force in the air They can direct them when he can't. They are trusting in a wanderer and a wandering savior away from the tabernacles. Absolutely made it up savior and then the very savior that they made it up teaches them that the very holy Torah was abolished. But then they don't want to come to their senses. Only half of the Torah, half of the prophets were completed. Must have the second services of the tabernacles because the second services must be perfected yet for then the initiation of the future revelation. And the second service went in disrepair centuries ago. So then when you read Shaliyah Shaul stating discipline is coming upon the tabernacles. The proper translation is tabernacle is not a house. The translators they did not understand the house. They were thinking of the house of prayer. But Shaul was making a reference of the tabernacles. Because he knew the tabernacles would go in this repair. So what else are going these scoundrels teach when you go to the establishment or these denominations? What are they going to hear? They are going to hear from a record there was given 99.5% of delegations of the responsibilities of the set-apart Hebrews. Your part in it is only 0.5%. So then you go into the establishment, a congregation, then you hear words that are not for you. You hear the Torah. The Torah was not for you. The Torah was for the guardians of the oracles. 
Then you hear the renewed covenant, 99.5% are the delegations of the responsibilities given them so then they could shepherd the Gentiles. So what you can hear, if any, it's only 0.5%. And what kind of other mesmerizations they are going to manipulate to get you in a proper path when you go there? What you do, you simply are paying to hear lies. Truly not very smart. I would never be in an establishment or in a congregation and give my 10% to hear junk. Spiritual junkies, impartation junkies, clapping junkies. The claps or the clappings in the congregations, do you know what those were? Some people they go around and they have these Pentecostal junks. And they go around with arms up and they sing and then shout and then clap. They don't even know what they are doing it for. Starting with the uh, Torah, they believe that the Torah was abolished. So the whole situation already is done. 100% ruined. Plus the clapping part of it and the joy part of it was only experienced because the words of Elohim came back completed. But not even these did understand. And they hear these scoundrels day after day after day after day after day. And the nation is down further in the ruin. And they don't understand, only half of the Torah, half of the prophets were completed. And then the services of the tabernacle would then continue in order to get the other half of the prophets and the half of the Torah then initiated in Revelation. That's why the services of the tabernacles must be in place. Holy God, what does it take to get these establishments taxed? Because they are teaching junk. It's understandable that the nation can worship as they please. That's absolutely true. And they should give them liberty. But when you take from a manuscript then that it was scoundrelized without the proper teaching and translated wrongly, it's not fair for the government not to tax them. You know why? Because then, if you had a document in your hand and it was translated by a bad company, a very shaggy company that did a very bad job translating your document, and then years later you found out that the company made a mistake while translated the document, wouldn't you be mad? Because you were told a lie. But you had to find out first why was the company then responsible for translating a wrong document. But then you have built your own understanding upon a copy that was scoundrelized. And you want then a responsible person that can give you what you lost because of the bad translation. This is precisely what's going on out there. They were lied to. They have a scoundrelized copy and then they don't tax those establishments. If they want to continue in their lives knowing that the translation was badly translated, then they should be taxed. Because the truth should be then exercised and if they want then to be teaching junk, then they should be taxed. 
if there is a religion invented from a starting from scratch then it's up to them if they want to tax them or not but if you have then many denominations that are coming from a original manuscript that it was in a certain way and then later they were scoundrelized yet they are having benefits from a scoundrelized copy they should be taxed because then people no longer mislead or misled should say because the point is only half of it was completed If they want to do on their own, so then remove the entire scandalized scripture and let them come up with their own scripture. 100% outside from any part of the original manuscript. So then what Gamaliel then is pointing is be cautious because these Tauda and Yehuda they try to make their own understandings this is precisely what our country was heading for because we are then as a country without the proper understanding of the Torah we are Tauda and then Yehuda thinking that we can do on our own as the past has shown it does not work Congregations are a fraud. You give your 10% and you hear junk. Simply junk. You clap your hand, you sing the song, and you don't even know why you were singing it. If you understand from the original manuscript, you have to have a report. What is the report? Do you know what the reports were? When the holy prophets of the camps would then direct the nations and people of what to do. Then later they would return with the glad reports. Then there was joy in the camp. And then these people, they go to these establishments, they don't understand the Torah, they have no idea of the future. The nation is ruined. And they have no link with the Torah and they think the Torah was abolished and what are they singing for? Holy God, they don't have any kind of a function. They go to those establishments, they don't have word of prophecy, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, healings, miracles, interpretation of tongues and tongues, and discerning of spirit. They got nothing. Yet they go in there, they clap around, and they sit and they listen to a scoundrel. And then they pay 10% of their income to those scoundrels, so then they go around traveling on their own. People got to be stupid, there is no other word. But then they have this hope that the next government, the next government, the next government, and then the next government, the same copy is counterlies and they think another result. That's being double stupid. Because not only they have the record of having the existing copies of this counterlized word, with so many other leaders that they tried and didn't work, but then maybe the next person. But then comes the day and there they go, clap around and then listen to junk.
And then the problem is when the people did not receive the proper understanding of the scripture, then they began to be vulnerable. When they begin to understand the portions of it, or they try to be halfway decent, then they get loaded with the junk. Churches are a failure. They didn't understand the concept of the continuation of the tabernacle service for the initiation of revelation. They thought that the Torah was abolished without understanding it. The Torah was never abolished. Only half of it completed. You can read in the uh, Isaiah when the Messiah was then reading. 61st chapter, there he was, reading in the temple. What did he read? Yeshiahu was then combining the spring feast and the autumn feast at the same time. And the Messiah, he went because he was then completing the spring feast. When you come to the section of it, and the vengeance of the Elohim, he didn't read it because it was revelation. But then regular people, they are simply not knowledgeable. They don't understand. They think the Torah and the prophets were abolished. Where did Yeshiahu get the understanding from the 61st chapter? From the Torah. From the second portion of Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, from the 23rd verse through the 44th verse. That's what Yeshiahu was reading. So then the whole concept of a church is absolutely abolished. The true abolishment is of the church. You want the abolishment word in some sort of understanding of our vocabulary? There you have. Abolishment of the church. The church is abolished. What they thought was abolished then is alive and what they believed is abolished. And please stay tuned, much more coming up.